I often have students showing me the painting they are struggling with. When I ask to see the reference photo, I immediately understand why they are struggling. Because the photo they picked isn't meant for painting. So what does it mean to have a photo that's suitable for painting? Keep watching. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Most people love vacation trip and I hope you do too. We all need to unwind and enjoy some time off around the world. Whether it is a family trip, a honeymoon, or even a solo backpack trip, you're creating wonderful memories. But like all good things, they end way too quickly. That's why we took a lot of photos when we are on a trip. And with today's technology, taking photos couldn't be easier. All you need is a smartphone. But since we are artists, we want to take a step further by painting the scenery and make those memories extra special. So after you come home, you look through hundreds of photos, try to pick out a photo to paint. And that's the first hurdle, picking a photo to paint. It can be very difficult. And the second hurdle you might face is that after you finally picked out a photo, you feel lost and not sure what to do with it. If you have this issue, here's probably why. You are taking a typical vacation photo with no intention of painting it later. And if that's the case, you are likely not going to end up with a photograph that's suitable for painting. There's a big difference between simply taking a nice vacation photo and taking a photo reference for painting because they have very different purpose. A vacation photo is simply for you to view and share later with your friends and family. So photo itself is the end product. But if you are taking a photo for painting reference, then the painting is the end product. The photo is just a piece of information for you to produce that product. So I want to share with you three things you should consider next time you are on a trip so you can take the most out of the trip you take. Number one, look for paintable shapes, not pretty scenery. This requires you to shift your mindset and look at the scenery with a different lens. You're not necessarily looking for a distinct landmark that the place is known for. Keep your eyes out for good paintable shapes. It can be a building, can be shape of light and shadow, or the combination of both. If you are only looking for the landmark, you are limiting yourself to a specific spot. And chances are there are tons of people taking photos and selfie, row signs and other stuff around it because it's a popular spot. So look for good shapes. This does take a different approach, but if you are able to do that, the possibility will open up for you. And then you will be able to find a good painting subject to take photo with. Number two, try to imagine a painting out of it. After you find a good shape, imagine painting it. If you have time, you can even try to do a little value study in your brain. See if you can make it into a big major shape in your mind. If it is hard for you to imagine a painting out of it, then that means it's going to be difficult for you to paint. Doesn't mean it is impossible, but that does mean you will need to work extra hard to resolve it into something that can be painted. Number three, compose your shot like you compose your painting. If you have time, don't just take a photo and walk away. Compose your shot a little. This is the start of your painting process, not when you start to put the brush on paper. So walk around a little, zoom in and zoom out, rotate your camera and see if the composition will be more interesting. If you can compose a good image with your camera, then you are already well set up for a successful painting. Okay, so let's look at a couple of photos I took during my trip to Leavenworth, Washington last week and show you the difference between the photos I took for paintings and typical vacation photos. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the photo I took during the trip. So this is Lake Wenatchee. It is a beautiful lake. My kid had a lot of fun in this lake, but would I paint this scenery? Probably not because it is, first of all, it's too pretty. There's a lot of details and all the transparency in the water and there's a lot of rocks. So 
it's hard to find a very strong shape for me to paint and especially even if i figure out a strong shape maybe like this mountains and the shape of the water and so there's not a shape that's going to give them contrast so if there's like a boat in here then maybe but this as a whole i am not able to do it justice because this is already so pretty and the lighting is not really ideal as well you don't see a strong shadow shape you see a little bit here but there's not a lot of cast shadow at all so i'm likely not going to paint this scenery so the purpose for me to took this photo is really just to have something i can keep to remind me of this trip this is not for me to paint later on so it was a beautiful sky and I took it and that's all that is. This is not really a reference for painting. Now I might paint this sky, but I might use this sky for another scenery because down here there's not really a lot of stuff that I can really paint because there's just a bunch of trees. The house is nice, but it's not really a strong shape that I can paint so so i took this photo mostly just for the sky reference so again this is not really for a painting so another photo and this photo is not exactly for vacation photo as well but i just want to took this photo and as a reference for my day job actually which is a video game artist who's doing digital landscape so there's a lot of detail that i can sort of work with and reference from now this is definitely a vacation photo. This is my wife and my kids. They supposed to block this no parking sign and I didn't notice they did them completely blocking it because this is really bright. So I'm definitely not going to paint this because painting four people is just madness. And at the same time, there's not a lot of big shape that I can work with. And if I really going to paint, then I need to probably recompose it into something like these. And even that, this is not a really pleasant image for me to paint anyway. So this is just a fun photo that reminds me that we are here at the Leavenworth town and you know their kids are getting smoothie, they're happy about it. Really, this is just a vacation photo for us to have this memory of this place. Now this photo, I took it not exactly with the intention to paint it because I just thought this is really pretty but i not exactly imagine this as a painting because because as pretty as this water is there's not a major shape and there's not a focus maybe if i put a boat here that might work but then i feel this is pretty as is so i'm not quite sure if i should ever paint this and another thing is if i do intended to paint this i might walk all the way down here so when i am Taking the shot, there's less distance, less space between this foreground and the background so I can fit it nicely into a frame because right now, the background and the foreground, there's a little bit too much space in between. So either I need to have something to fill the space or I need to take a different photo, but I'm not there anymore. So this is probably not going to make it into a painting. So another shot i shot it from the bridge and again this is not for painting definitely not i'm just taking the photo of them hanging out next to the river again it's a beautiful river i love all the transparency there but again this is not exactly for painting it's just way too much detail and i cannot find a major shape here so this can potentially make it into a good painting. When I am taking the shot, I do have a painting in mind. So we got the nice major shape over here and the house offset it as a contrast. And I'm probably not going to paint the wire fence because it's not pretty, not gonna paint the sign in anything. But this definitely can make it into a painting. I can definitely imagine a painting out of it. It is a easy subject to tackle. So this photo is taken outside of the Airbnb we stayed at. So when I took this shot, I definitely have the intention to paint this later on. So this is actually the reference photo for the painting demo later. 
because this is a nice big shape right here and we got a focal point there's just enough depth for me to make into a nice painting and i also like the lighting as well so i actually did a value study first and then paint a scenery out of it i did recompose this image for painting though because i feel like the sky and the ground is 50 50 it's not really that good of a composition so i recompose it later so if I crop this, I'm using a rule of third grid. I will need to maybe crop it down. So this can be at one of the focal point here, or I need to move the whole scene down a little bit. So maybe something like these, and I'll have to expand the foreground like these. So probably something like that. Again, it's just some quick Photoshop trick, but I have to do something like these to make it into a painting. So when I'm doing the painting, I didn't Photoshop the photo like these, but in my mind, I'm recomposing the image. This is also another photo. You guys already seen it from my last video. Again, when I took this photo, I had the intention to paint this. This is actually a tricky subject that I didn't expect. What attracts me in this image is definitely the pocket of the light here. So it did took me a little bit of effort to resolve it into a painting, but I'm happy that I painted this one. Definitely a good learning experience. So this scenery is actually not something that it was intended to paint. I'm just taking it for some reference for the cow and that's about it. So back to the Leavenworth town, I took some image of the building. I might turn this into a painting, but again, I need to resolve it a little bit. I like the building, I like the background, but there's very little stuff going on here, so I might need to so I might need to put some cars here just to have something in the middle ground and the background. I definitely will remove the sign here because it's just not really looking good for a painting. Same thing here. I like this building, I like how bright it is against the background, but again, the mountains in the background is going to be a little bit tricky. I do like this tree in the foreground. So if I need to paint it, I might need to crop it so to recompose it a little bit. So this is actually a good composition for painting. I can definitely try to paint that. So that's another thing when you take a photo, if you don't have time, maybe take a wide shot. But when you come home, you can try to maybe recompose it just to see if you can find a better composition. I'm using Photoshop, but there's a lot of other free programs you can use, Affinity Photo and things like that. You can use a lot of different programs. And if you're using a mobile phone, you can use Snapsy. It's a free app from Google. It's a very cool app to do some photo editing, cropping and recomposing your image. So hopefully this quick rundown of photo is helpful for you. So hopefully now you can see the difference between a photo taken for painting versus a simple vacation photo taken for memory. So now that we pick out a photo to paint, let's take a look at the process of the painting. So you can see how I turn from this photo to this painting. Before we continue, if you like this video and my channel, please give it a like and subscribe. Remember to hit the bell icon so you won't miss my next video and live stream. Okay, let's start. So starting with the drawing, with the big shape, this is actually quite important and you shouldn't skimp on that because you want to figure out the size and the placement of things to have a good composition. And as you can see, I slightly raise up the building, the horizon just a little bit so I can have a little bit more foreground to lead viewer's eyes into the scenery. Versus the photo I took, the sky is almost half of the picture. So when it comes to your own painting, you are free to change anything you want as long as it makes sense for you. It's very important not to lock down to what you have with your photo. And as you can see, I also added some cows in the distance. I think those will just give it a little bit more life and also it will be a good scale reference as well. Because cows are huge, right? It's a lot bigger than human, but it's still kind of relatable. And when you see a cow that little, you will be able to tell how vast the whole scenery feels like. So I'm finishing up the drawing, clean up some stuff. And now I'm wetting the paper with a sponge. So mostly just the sky area, maybe a little bit down to the house where the light is going to be. 
Since I'm using a block, the wetness usually won't last that long because if I'm using a free sheet of paper, then I can wet the back as well. So it will last a little bit longer. So I added a little bit more water with my brush. But now with the paper wet, I can add some colors for the light. The color will bloom out a little bit because the wet paper, but you don't need to worry about that. We can always refine the shape with darker value later on. So I re-wet the sky a little bit because it's starting to dry. And I'm mixing the color of the sky and the clouds. So I want to add a little bit more clouds than appear in the photo. So give it a nice first big wash. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of bloom, which is great. The paper is still a little bit wet. So I'm leaving out some white for the cloud. And I soften some edges as needed. I'm adding the dark part of the cloud, which is not in the photo, but I just feel like I'm adding that volume into the cloud a little bit. I did have a video last time about how to paint cloud, so if you're interested, you can check that out. I go into a lot more detail on that. But the key for me to paint cloud is you get it done while it is still wet and damp, and then you leave it. You don't go back and try to fix anything or try to add anything because it's going to ruin the freshness of it. So now that the sky is done, the wash is still wet, but I'm fading that into green. So I'm working on a background mountain already. However, I'm not defining it. This is again just the color of the light. Very important that in the first wash, you are not trying to define anything too much. Now I can paint around some highlight and preserve those. But for the most part, it's far more important to have a clean first wash to have just some nice color of light. You can always go back in with white gouache if you are missing out some highlight. Don't try to don't try to sacrifice a clean nice first wash because you want to preserve some highlight. And don't leave out too many highlights. That's a mistake that I made when I just starting to learn watercolor because it can easily get too noisy and unnatural. So just leave around some important highlights if you can. And if sometimes it has a little bit of sparkle, that's fine. So now this is the first wash, just the color of the light. Not a lot of definition. So now I'm mixing the color for the second wash. So I did do a value study on this one. So as you can see, in terms of the value study, the first wash is just the white of the paper. So now I'm doing the second wash, which is the middle value. So that is going to include anything other than the sky and the highlight. So the mountain and some part of the house and the foreground. This is a very important step because it gave me a clear picture of how to work on this painting. Now back to the photo, you can see there's a lot of detail in the photo, which is the trap that sometimes I fall into because it's just so beautiful, all these trees and the details. And when you are doing the color version, you want to switch it up a little bit. So you start to mix a little bit more colors and things like that. And sometimes you can lose sight of the simplicity your value study is. So I'm painting some tree wet onto wet with slightly darker value, but I don't dwell into it. I just paint those and move on. Don't overdo those details. That's very, very important. My first attempt of this painting, I was spending a little bit too much time on the background and I tried to get too much detail into it. And that just didn't work out so well. So. In this one, I make sure that I get over with that quickly and try to follow my value study as much as possible. So I'm mixing a dark, cool color right now and paint in the cloud shadow because there's cloud roaming around and sometimes it blocks part of the sun. So you're getting those huge cloud shadow sort of floating over the terrain 
and that's very beautiful so i want to add those in but because the cloud shadow are usually very soft so i want to do that wet on too wet i really need to make sure my mixture is thick enough otherwise if it's too watery it's just going to wash off the second wash and that's not going to look good so while at it i'm also connecting some dark shape of the tree so this is actually the dark value in usual cases this is going to be done in the third wash but because i want those soft edges i am doing this right now and another tricky part of this painting is the middle ground trees they are a lot bigger than the background trees and they do have some subtle value changes and it's very very easy to get carried away by those because when you are painting you have your eyes wide open and when you have your eyes wide open looking at the source photo you see all these details that you just want to paint those in and it's easier not to think about it but if you don't think about it you're going to start to do too much detail and that's not going to look good not going to look loose it's going to look too busy so what I do is that I try to screen my eyes a little bit and see what value and color merges together. And I will try to do that on my painting as well. So I'm adding just a little bit more value on my house there so that it has a little bit of separation between the wall and the roof. And of course, when I paint the dark value, the house is going to pop out a little bit more. And now I'm just painting some bushes, some darker patch of grass here and there, just to make the foreground grass a little bit more interesting. Otherwise, it's really flat right now. So as I wrap up the second wash, I am going to start painting the dark. This is going to make the painting look a lot more complete because the value range is going to be complete. So especially the middle ground house, they desperately need some dark and contrast. So I'm starting with the house on the right, but also I'm painting some dark part of the tree and let that merge into the dark part of the house so overall, it just feel like they belong together. They belong within the same scenery. Again, connecting the shape is one of the most important thing you need to do with watercolor. It will maintain the overall big shape and it will also lead the viewer's eyes into a good flow. So in the beginning of the trip, I was hoping to bring my material there to do some plein air. But during those times, the weathers are very, very hot. It goes up to like 90 degree or so. So it's not a best time for doing watercolor. It's going to dry way too fast and staying outside is going to be very unpleasant. So I just decided to take photo home and paint from it. But it's still very important that you visit the place and see it with your own eyes because as I'm doing this painting, the memory come flooding back in. I can feel how vast the scenery is. I can smell the grass and the animals and things like that. So it's always important that you see the place yourself. Most of the scenery painting, I took the photo myself. And that's not because I don't want to paint other people's photo. I mean, it's a copyright issue unless the person gave me permission to do so. But also because I never see the scenery myself, it's hard for me to really get into the scale, the feeling and everything of the real scene. And if the photo is my only reference and I've never seen the place in person, then the believability of my painting could suffer. So I just paint out some fences, keep those very loose. They don't need to be absolutely perfectly straight and stuff. Now I'm painting some cows. Those are so far away. All you really need is some simple shapes and the correct value. So the painting is pretty much there, but the foreground grass is a little bit bare. 
So I'm starting to add a little bit more variation, adding some more dark patch of grass and bushes. And I did a glaze over it later just to make the value slightly darker because that's going to make the house pops out a little bit more. I'm adding some white gouache to get some of the highlight back. Just a little bit though, you don't need a lot. So now the paper is pretty much dry, I can do a glaze over it. So mixing a nice warm green and take a decent sized brush. You don't want to do glazing with a small brush, especially for a large area. It's not going to look good. So a decent sized brush. And I still leave out a little bit of the light part of the grass just to still have a little bit of subtle value changes. So it looks a little bit more interesting. And again, because I did a glaze, the paper is wet again. I can do a little bit more wet onto wet work if I need to. And just by adding a little bit of those, it adds some variations. Any chance you can do some wet onto wet work, you should think about doing it. It doesn't mean you have to do it all the time, but once the paper is dry, you lost that opportunity. And of course, you can always re-wet the paper to do that, but it's not going to feel the same. So I'm adding some dry brush mark in the foreground. I'll add a little bit of dry patches of grass. It is very hot, so there are quite a bit of dry grass here and there. So I'm also using my fingernail and the palette knife to scratch out just a couple of grass, give it a little bit of texture. It's very subtle though, it's not that obvious at all. So to wrap up the painting, I give the background a glaze just to make it a little bit darker. Just some part of the hill though, not the whole thing. So mostly on the right side, this will give the contrast to the house. And here is the finished painting. I hope this is helpful and I hope you enjoy this painting process. Next time when you go on a trip, make sure to spend some time looking for good paintable shapes. So you are not only going to have vacation photos to share with your loved ones, but you are also going to have photos that can help you create a painting that will make a precious moment extra special. That's it for today's video. If you like my channel, please like and subscribe. You can check out my video on choosing the right subject to paint here. You can also visit my website at cafewatercolor.com to download my fast track watercolor PDF guide and a bonus video. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.